You know, as you can see from the title, this is one of everyone's, probably one of everyone's favorite subjects. <laughs> I just need to hear something about death. When's that preacher going to preach to me about death? You know, you know that and, can I say sex? You know, that's two sort of taboo subjects. Uh, as far as preachers preaching from the pulpit, you gotta tread lightly when you get into this those subject matters. Y'all want me to talk about sex next week? <laughs> huh? Yeah. Okay, all right. Seriously though, this is a sensitive subject, and it's something I think we must come to grips with. You know, anytime I did a, do a funeral, and like I said last week, those of you here, I've done about 34, 35 funerals from young, 17-ish to 90s, people in their 90s. I can't help but think about my own death. Now, I want to stress in this subject, limit your thinking to you. Because when you start thinking about others, that's where it gets can get very emotional. Either those that have gone on or what have you, you thought about your, you know, just people, your loved ones. So I want you to keep it the focus on you personally. And sometimes that can be painful. But I can't help but think about death, obviously. You're thinking about the life and death of, of someone that's passed on. So what about you? Is, is that, do, does it cross your mind when you go to a funeral about your own death? Am I on the right path there? Huh? Huh? Yep. Yep. So there, there is somebody that that has happened. Okay? All right. Okay. Boy. Yeah, this might not be a. Yeah, I think if I get into it, this will be a little bit more of an amenish than you would think. You, you know, death is the finality of life on this earth. It is. It's the process of moving on from this reality to another reality. I struggled with that word reality. How should I phrase that? And that was the best thing I could come up with. You know, is it a different dimension? Yeah, maybe. You know, uh, I, but it, it just didn't seem right. It's another reality. You know, uh, you, does that make sense? That you, it is another reality that, that we don't really know that much about, and we try to figure it out, and we don't want to think about it and all that. So it is another reality. It's moving on to that other reality. And nobody wants to die. Lord, don't let me die tomorrow because I preached this sermon. Amen. I'm not ready to. I'm not ready to. But are you prepared for death whenever it comes? And I see some heads shaking. And that's what this is all about. You know, as uh, somebody mentioned to me, I think it was Renee said, or somebody said, you know, there's, oh, yeah. There's two things certain. Everybody knows that? Taxes. Death and taxes. I am working on my taxes right now. I haven't got it finished. I hate it, but I don't trust anybody just to say it. Throw a bunch of papers. I like to sort of know what's going on and what have you. And it, I think everybody should. Everybody should. But, you know, death and taxes, they're for certain. You can't, you can't escape them. You know, you should be prepared for death, both materially and spiritually. Now, the focus is going to be on spiritually prepared for death. Materially, you should have a will. I might be stomping on some 
toes here, or, or it's not stomping, stepping on some toes. You should have a wheel. Angela and I are in the process of updating our wheel. I was a little bit somewhat outdated, but we're in the process of doing that. The attorney sent me 44 pages <laughs> of my wheel, her wheel, power of attorney, power of attorney, and advanced directives. That's what you need. You don't want to get the government, the government involved with your estate. That's right. So you need to be prepared. But the focus, and I'll leave it up to you and your financial advisors, attorneys, whatever. You can ask me and I'll tell you what I think, what I know. Uh, I think Paul was prepared. The Apostle Paul, we're going to look at Paul. We're going to talk about Peter just a little bit too. But Paul was prepared. And the scripture I'm going to read to you in Philippians uh, chapter 1, verses 24, 21 through 24, Paul was torn between wanting to die and live. I love this scripture. If you can understand this verse of scripture, these few verses of scripture I'm going to read, you understand death, I think. I think... You're prepared. If you can be like Paul, you're prepared to die. Let me put it that way. Paul, in verse 21, Philippians chapter 1, says, For me, to live is Christ, and to die is gain. So he elaborates here. But if I am to live on in the flesh, this will, be, this will mean fruitful labor for me. But I do not know which to choose. But I am hard pressed from both directions, having the desire to depart and be with Christ, for that is very much better. Yet to remain on in the flesh is more necessary for your sake. This is not difficult to understand, is it? No. Paul is torn. To die is gain. To die is gain. Amen. And our society and our we don't necessarily associate with that. You know, a hundred years ago, people were, death was all around. It was a rural lifestyle. Infant mortality was up there. Uh, Angela's uh, father, he had one brother, but he had two sisters that died in infancy of stuff that would be cured today. What did you do when you wanted some meat to eat? It's hog killing time. People grew up. If you want some chicken, what do you do? Do you go to Publix and get the chicken? No. You go out there in the chicken pen, and I saw my grandmother do it many a time, and kill a chicken. One in one producing any eggs. I remember my grandfather in Thanksgiving one year. I saw him whack off the head of a live turkey. This lady, and I cried. I don't know why, but I cried about seeing him kill that uh, uh, kill that turkey. I don't maybe I had an affection for the turkey. I don't like that. I can't remember. But anyway, you know, Paul going back to said. I don't know if I want to live or die. That's what Paul's saying. I want you to get that. I don't know if I want to live or die. It's a tough choice for me, Paul said. Really, I think I'd rather die. Do y'all get that? Isn't that counter, counterintuitive? Is that the 
Is that the correct word? Am I saying, am I saying that correctly? But for the kingdom of God's sake, maybe I should remain. Now Paul was under house arrest in Rome during that time. And guess what happened to him about two years later? Everybody know what happened to the Apostle Paul? <coughs> beheaded. Beheaded. Head chopped off. That's what tradition tells us. Paul was executed by the Romans. Paul was obviously prepared for death. He was obviously. He actually looked forward to it. He actually looked forward to it. In, in many ways, in all ways, he sets the example of how all believers should view death. I, I, I think he does. I think this, that I just read. Now we're going to talk about good old Peter just a little bit. Peter was not prepared for death. Remember, in the, uh, I started to read the scripture, but, uh, you know, Peter says, Oh, Jesus, oh, don't let, nobody's going to get you. They ain't going to kill you. I'll, I'll fight and I'll, I'll guard you and all that kind of stuff. He said, no, no, no. You'll, for the rooster crows, you're going to deny me three times. And you see that in Scripture. Peter does deny Jesus. When, so, oh, that's, that's one of his men? That's one of his followers? Get him, get him. Oh, I don't know that guy. And he sort of cusses at him. But tradition says years later, Peter died. He was crucified. But, and again, Christian tradition says that Peter said, I, I am not worthy to be crucified as my Lord was. Hang me upside down. You're going to crucify me. Put me upside down on the cross. That probably hastened death, though. You think through it medically. So what changed in Peter? I mean, Paul gives us a pretty good idea when we read in Philippians where he was at on this. Peter, like, no, 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 no. I'm, you know, then, then he, he, he did die a martyr's death also. So what changed in Peter? He lost his fear of death. Like Paul, and understood what was he on the other side. See, that's what we have to get to. Fern Butler, as we last week, she understood that as well. And I, 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 I can go through uh, the most of the people that funerals I did. As I look around and see. Faces of loved ones that I know have passed on. They knew. They knew. They accepted it. In Hebrews chapter 2, verses 14 and 15. Since then the children share in flesh and blood, he himself likewise also took of the same that through death he might render powerless him who had the power of death, that is the devil, and might deliver those who through the fear of death were subject to slavery all their lives. This says that as children of God, we should not fear death. That's what it's, it's saying. We should not fear death as children of God. Jesus' death freed us from the fear of our death. That's what he, the, the author of Hebrews, the writer of Hebrews is saying. So why do we still fear death? I mean, I think I'm 75% prepared for death mentally and I know pretty much, you know, materially I, I, I am. We are. Angela and I are. Spiritually, I'm 
you know, I'm, I'm mentally 75, maybe 80 percent there right now. You know, I'm in pretty good health. I'm not ready to go yet. And I've gave the Lord a list of things I don't want to die of. You know. My dad had a stroke. Four years later, I had another stroke. Lord, I, Lord don't, I don't want to have a stroke. It's not the way I want to You can speak to God personally with your... You know, I know there's people faced with various different... There's older people. There's people faced with various different ailments and what have you. It, it makes probably makes you think about these things. It makes you think about these things. So how do I get prepared? You must be born again. You must be born again. You must, let me say it another way, you must be saved. You must come to Christ and acknowledge Him as your Lord and Savior. If not, you've got a lot to figure you better be scared essence when you say that word from the pulpit you really should be scared scared as we say scared frightened you must be filled with the Holy Spirit and that's really the key to being prepared for death that's really the key. Why? Because the Holy Spirit, because with the Holy Spirit, it removes our lessons, makes it much, the fear of death much less. I fear death, but it's not overwhelming. I go to sleep at night. If I don't wake up, you know, so be it. I mean, Angela might cry a little bit. Also, the Holy Spirit reminds us that we're children of God. And, and in reality, if we're a child of God, we're going to see the Father. You know, I, I sort of simplifying it, but that's in, in reality, that's what it. Romans eight fifteen says, "If you you have not received a spirit of you have not received a spirit of slavery leading to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons or daughters, by which you cry out, Abba, Father." I've used this in, in many times. It's the building of different contexts. We cry out, Abba Father. He hasn't given you the spirit of fear. When you're born again believers in Christ, if you're a born again believer in Christ, and I mean I should have said this if I hadn't already, you have nothing to fear of death. But I still fear it. Does that make sense? Am I alone in that? Come on now, y'all don't run need some help. If I start getting excited and all that, you know, that's where I need a little help. You know, we're with you, brother. We ain't got it all figured out, but you're at least making some sense and I understand it a little better. We're with you. All right. <laughs> Children of God can mock death. We shouldn't fear it. It has no hold on us. I don't understand... I mean, I can sort of visualize and sing about it. Beulah land, glory land, streets of gold and all that. I use John 14 verses 1 through 3 near about every funeral I've ever done. It's very comforting. And it, and it takes the person that's here thinking about their own death, takes them into heaven and all that kind of stuff. But it's still that there's, we just don't know. We don't know. But it shouldn't have a hold on us. Because Jesus, through Christ, Jesus conquered death in the grave. His death prepares us 
for our death. Because as he rose again, I will rise. As we just as I will rise. On eagles. That's a, yeah, on eagles' wing. And that's another whole sermon and what have you. That's another whole sermon series, subject and all that. I preached on that before. But we can mock that. First Corinthians 15, 55. Oh death. Oh death. Where is your victory? Oh death. Where is your sting? Oh death, I fear you no more. Oh death, I don't understand it. You know, I understand it, but I don't understand it. I have a little bit of fear, but I have faith. Oh death, I mock you. Oh death, I'm going into the presence of God and I will say, Abba, Father. I'm here. I'm here. Oh, death, where is your victory? Oh, death, where is your sting? It's gone. Through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.